I've started recording. I'll give Carolyn a minute to um, start the live event. A couple of seconds there. OK. OK, morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the uh, Pension Fund Committee, uh, which is being held under local authority Coronavirus Meetings Wales Regulations 2020. Uh, I'd like to manage expectations from the outset and highlight that there may be some glitches in this meeting, hopefully not too many. But please be assured that we will learn from them and keep striving towards a seamless process as long as we're undertaking virtual meetings. I'm also conscious that a number of the participants may have issues with bandwidth and would suggest that if there are any issues, they turn off the video should it become an issue. This is the open part of the meeting and is being broadcast live so that members of the public and others may view it. Please ensure that you all mute your microphones and remember to unmute them when you are called to speak, unlike me. Um, Democratic Services Officer will call out the names of all taking part in the meeting. And can you please confirm your attendance? Jeremy? OK, Councillor John Curtis. Present. Councillor Will Thomas. Present. Councillor Phil Downing. Present. Councillor Peter Rees. Present. Councillor Gareth Sullivan. Present. Uh, Nick Gilemma. Present. Uh, Ian Guy. Present. Uh, Jeff Dong. Present. Karen Cobb. Present. Karen Isaac. Present. Uh, I don't think there's anyone present from Wales Audit Office. And I'm Jeremy Parkhouse, Democratic Services. OK, thank you. OK, thank you, Jeremy. Jeremy. So in terms of, and just for in terms of voting, uh, when we come to that, um, I'll call on the Democratic Services Officer to run the name vote for each item requiring a decision. Is that OK? Yeah. OK, so we'll, um, we'll take item one then, which is apologies for absence. No apologies, Chair. Good. Uh, item two is disclosures of personal and prejudicial interests. Um, I'm a member of the uh, Sydney County Swansea Pension Fund. Will? Yeah, also a member of the fund. Phil? So I'm moot. Oh, yes. I was getting my hand up and down. See, I can't do two things at the same time. <laughs> yeah, uh, my brother uh, works for the council and he's a member of the pension fund. Gareth? I'm a member of David County Council, the former David County Council Pension Fund. And my daughter in law is a member of the fund, of the Swansea Fund. Jan? I'm a member of the fund, Swansea Fund. Anybody else? No? Yeah, of, I'm. Member of the Pension Fund and uh, Clark with Flanderton Higher Community Council. Jeff? Um, I'm a member of the LGPS. I'm a member, I'm a member I'm of a the member Swansea of the Fund. I'm a member of the LGPS. Ian? Yes, I'm a member of the Swansea Fund. Okay. Peter? My daughter in law is a member of the Fund. Okay. I think that's everyone. Thank you. You've missed me, I think. Oh, Karen. Karen. I'm a member of the fund and uh, I'm going to leave the meeting for item 4F. OK, yeah. Um, thank you. Uh, item 3 then is to approve and sign minutes of the previous meeting. So uh, they start on page page one of the agenda, and that's the meetings of Friday the 13th of March. <laughs> Seems a long time ago now, and it's uh, quite an apt day. <laughs> <laughs> for the last meeting. Um, OK, so if I go then page by page, page one, page two, page three, page four, page five, and page six. Everyone happy to approve those? Yeah. Yeah. OK, thank you. And then we move on to um, the next item on the agenda, which is um, 
Uh, report to the Section 151 officer. So we've got the first report, which is the draft statement of accounts 2019-2020, uh, accounts starting on page seven. Jeff? Thanks, Chairman. Um, f f further to the Chairman's comments uh, about holding virtual meetings, obviously this is the, the first virtual meeting that we've, we, we've had under the new regulations. And uh, as such, um, I, I echo um, the, the Chairman's challenges that we face um, whilst conducting these virtual meetings. So I beg your indulgence, because um, obviously draft statement of accounts report and document is, is a pretty wordy and detailed document and, and, and in normal circumstances um, it, it would be a, a step by step run through through the document but I, I assume that, that members of the committee like like, like myself um, are, are having to navigate the document electronically and obviously um, I'm using one machine for teams and I'm navigating the document uh, on, a, on an iPad down below here so I'm not I'm not proposing that I, I, I do as detailed a run through as I would historically. However, if, if, if members of the committee do have any detailed questions or, or, or items that they wish to, to, to do a deeper dive on, I'm happy to answer any questions. However, um, be, before we, we, we dig into um, the, the financial statements, as, as the chairman says, uh, what, what you've got before you is, is the usual set of financial statements for the pension fund uh, um, year ended 31st of March 2020. And as the chairman alluded to, um, the last time we met in early March, um, it was a very different place. Um, I, th I, th I think I think the the first impact of COVID was was being felt at that time. And I think we all walked into the committee room and um, we were elbow bumping in a jocular fashion, um, not 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 realizing that it was it was um, um, uh, um, a, sh a shape of things to come and and, and things would qu quickly escalate. Um, and, and some of the impacts of the COVID-19 um, pandemic uh, uh, flow through into the financial statements that you see before you, because obviously the financial markets were, 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 were gravely affected in, in, in that first quarter. And, and uh, Nick and our consultants in his financial summary later on will, will, will give a bit more of a, a detailed insight onto the impact of, of, of the crisis and the volatility in the markets as at that time. However, um, as, as I move through the statement of accounts, you, you'll see um, you know the the quite material impact it did have on the asset valuations as at 31st of March, 2020. But but Nick Nick then will also um, um, indicate that that things have bounced back um, pr 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 pretty well since that date in in in, in the quarter up to June. Um, so so hopefully that the, there's a there's a bit of comfort there. Um, the financial statements before you, um, committee members, um, obviously. Set, set out um, our financial position at a point in time, i.e. 31st of March 2020, and, and outline the financial transactions during the year. But um, they're, they're, they're merely reflective of, 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 of the financial transactions of the fund, and, and, and they reflect the main objectives of the fund, which, which um, are, are to pay our pensioners, pay our liabilities. And, and um, it would be remiss of me not, not, not to say that um, since, since the onset of the, of, of, of the pandemic, our pensions administration team, uh, our, our, our treasury management team, our pensions payroll team, our pension fund investment and, and, and a, an accounting team have managed to discharge their responsibilities in respect of those objectives. And we've paid all our pensioners, we've paid all our lump sums due, um, albeit may, may be, maybe slightly delayed and that'll that, that's borne out in our, our breaches figures later on. However, uh, we've still managed to, 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 to function and to deliver the service. So that's, 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 that's a, a huge commitment to, to, to the staff of, of, of the admin section and, and, and Karen Cobb and her team and the investment management uh, and accounting function because the statement you've got before you in respect to the financial statements um, were, were completed and delivered uh, in accordance with with the timetable outlined by by um, Wales Audit Office when they presented their audit plan to you earlier in the year, so again that's that's, that's a huge achievement and, and testament to the professionalism of Karen and uh, and and her staff in, in in being able to to hit those deadlines um, um, against the backdrop of of of, of um, the onset of the pandemic, um, and again. It would be remiss of me not, not to acknowledge our colleagues in ICT for, for, for providing the infrastructure 
uh, and and um, electronic infrastructure and 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 support to to, to allow Karen and her team to to do that remotely from 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 home. So, um, members of the committee, I'll I'll take you through some some, some of the usual highlights that I like to to, to point out to you. Um, as I said earlier on, we, we, we can see the impact of um, the, the COVID-19 pandemic on, on asset valuations in that you can see that um, the, the, the valuation of the fund has, has, has gone down slightly from, 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 from uh, the previous 31st of March. Um, we, we're just under 2 billion as at 31st of March, where, whereas it was just over 2 billion um, at the same time last year. However, there's a lot better position than, 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 than might have been expected, noting that um, equity markets were down about 18% um, in, 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 in the first quarter of, of, of this year to, to, to have only have, have, have seen about a, you know, a, a, a 4 or 5% drop in asset valuations is a, is, is a, a great boon to and, and a nod to the great diversification program that the Pension Fund Committee have implemented and also um, is recognition of, of, of the benefits of the equity protection program that the Pension Fund Committee approved last year. I know it wasn't for this reason and, and, and you know, none of us could, could have seen the COVID-19 pandemic. However, it, you know, what's, what's the old adage? It's, it's better to be lucky than, than to be good. And uh, in this instance, we were, we were quite lucky to have timed the implementation of the equity protection program ahead of um, ahead of the onset of the of, of, of the pandemic, um, as I say, it's 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 an open scheme. Um, we, we we can see later on in in, in the document where, where where we list our our new bodies. There we can see um, a, a, a new scheduled body um, within the list of employers in the scheme in in, in the form of Mumbles Community Council. We're, we're, we're glad to welcome them on board. As I say, it's an open scheme, and, and we can see that um, the number of total members of the scheme has increased from from. 45,000 to 47,000 with um, in in the course of the last 12 months. So, so it is st still an open scheme. We, we, we are still generating um, more cash in than, than than we need to pay out in terms of our dealings with members. So, in that regard, you know, we can still um, t take a lot uh, a medium to long term view uh, in, in respect of our investment strategy um, in, that, that 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 we deploy to, to to meet our liabilities. Um, again, another point of interest that, that the members usually like to, 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 to address is, is the investment management costs uh, against the backdrop of, of WPP and greater efficiency, etc. We can see um, on page 24, the investment management expenses have, 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 have decreased, but largely stayed, stayed, stayed the same if, if, if you read, read, read across line by line. And, and that's largely a result of um, a, f a function of asset valuations be, being um, um, largely the same because they're a function of um, assets under management, but also reflective of um, the move and having the full year effect of moving assets across into WPP. And also last year, because of all those transactions, um, w w we incurred quite a lot of transaction uh, expenses last year, which would have inflated last year's expenses. However, just a signal that that for the coming year, where, where, whereby we, we we will be transitioning more assets into the WBP, we, we may ex expect to see those expenses spike for for 2021. Um, as I say, Chairman, um, I'm, I'm not, not proposing to 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 drag members through line by line through through the detailed notes of the accounts. However, um, um, like like to leave it there and and, and ask the committee to 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 approve it or, or ask any questions um, that that you may have. Thanks, Jeff. Um, Will. Hi, thanks, thanks, Chair. Um, just one one question about the private debt. Um, could you refresh my memory? What what that is, please? Um, you roll then. Um, if, if, if members recall, and there's there's a report later on which refers to this, uh, Councillor Thomas, in respect of of um, the investment strategy implementation. And um, if you recall, 
the, the pension fund committee approved a strategy to 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 decrease its its equity allocation and move those assets into a bucket of assets which which were more yielding in nature i.e throwing off income throwing off interest throwing off uh, rentals um in, in, in that form and expecting a return in in the shape of yield as opposed to capital growth um and the the, the report later on outlines um, our progress in implementing that strategy. However, one of the fir first areas of deployment and, and one of the earlier strategies that we were able to deploy was into private debt. And private debt is, is different as opposed to, to, to the public bond markets and the public credit markets that we traditionally have invested in is that, as the name implies, these are off-market transactions. They're not publicly tradable. They, they, they are more illiquid harder to, to to access more more um insights and an appraisal is required before before investing into them however um the corollary to that would be the expectation is that the returns would be higher um so so these were identified as as an appropriate asset class for us for us to to to, to seek yield from and and that that the allocation that you can see disclosed in the um in, in the statement of accounts is that first deployment of, of of that tranche of private debt so it's lending to private companies to help them expand um develop yeah. maybe may, maybe buy them out um um transition to to new management etc to, to 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 increase market share before they perhaps um ipo or or, or get sold etc cetera, etc cetera. so so it's the private element of, of, yeah. of that um funding um yeah sorry uh, i get that but uh, what what comp what company specifically is it in is, it, is grouped in a bucket is it like a fund or lots lots of different underlying assets however the manager uh the ma managing that portfolio is our centra okay any other questions for jeff no right so Jeff, I, I suppose from um, from a public perspective, a question for me is, uh, have we had many queries? Because I'm sure, I know I have, from, from, uh, from my own, uh, uh, some, some group members who are members of the pension fund about how the impact is, uh, uh, of coronavirus on the equity market has impacted the fund. So, you know, I think it's, uh, is it, there's a bit of a narrative there, though, isn't there, for, for the Swansea Pension Fund in terms of some, some of the strategies that we've undertaken. And so, um, and we would have seen, as you quite rightly pointed out, a significant market fall in, in March and April in, in the equities market. But then, uh, you know, in the last week or so, uh, news that um, the, the FTSE has seen the, the highest, highest gain quote against since uh, since 1987, so um, and I think that's replicated in America as well on the Dow Jones, isn't it? There, there's a record uh, improvement, so there has been a, a bit of an equity bounce back. But I think the important message is that for members, is, isn't it, that uh, a this is pension fund is is investment for the long term. So there will be uh, unfortunately um, uh, shocks <laughs> along the way, as as we have seen or on a number of occasions over many years. Unfortunately, this has probably been the biggest one. But I think we can take some comfort in, in the bounce back, but also some of the strategy around the private debt uh, and around the, especially the equity protection uh, that we, we took out, as you alluded to. So I think, um, you know, none of the, none of the market is, uh, I don't know, if anyone's got a private pension and been tracking it, it'll be, uh, it, it would have done your head in over the last couple of months in many respects. But he will see, would have seen that bounce back. And I think, uh, you know, members can be reassured in some of the decisions that we've made over the last uh, last uh, 12 to 18 months or so, which is, um, I think, you know, put us in a, in a, in a really good position. So, um, uh, you know, there's a reasonable narrative as well, that we can give to members who are worried about their future pensions going forward is, 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 uh, is what I'm getting at, I suppose. Um Chairman, you've you, you've hit on a, a very important point uh, um, w w with the massive distinction between a, a privately invested pension fund and and, and the LGPS, because the LGPS is is does does come with a, a sovereign guarantee in that members' benefits are, are underwritten by by statute, and and the benefits are not dependent on the returns that that the investments make. Um, the, the 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 benefits that the members have, have worked hard to accrue over their working lifetimes are guaranteed 
um, by, 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 by statute. So the, the, the performance of those uh, um, investments and, and, and how well they do um, impacts um, th those members' employers um, more, more directly in the pocket. Um, if, if they do well, um, employers' contributions then, then would, would, would be adjusted to reflect, to reflect that requirement. Um, yeah. So uh, one, we want to give that reassurance to members yeah. that, that, yeah. That, 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 that there isn't that you know, direct yeah. link as, as, as you wouldn't have in your uh, um, private pension fund. Okay. Che Chairman, if, if you could beg an indulgence as well, if, if, if I could, I forgot to mention before in, in, in the presentation about the statement of accounts is that obviously the um, Wales Audit Office um, presented a report in, um, outlining their audit plan in respect of the statement of accounts. And as, and as I said previously, Karen and her team have produced the statement of accounts and presented them to, to Wales Audit Office um, within that timetable that they've outlined uh, in, 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 in their plan to you. However, we've had notification from WAO that they shall not be starting their audit of the pension fund accounts until at the earliest um, end of August, possibly the beginning of September. So the normal expectation for the committee is to receive the ISA 260 and the, the auditor's report on this statement of accounts that you've got before you today in September. That is going to be highly unlikely, noting that they're only going to be starting their work um, at that time. Um, so I can only commend um, um, our, our investment and accounting team for, 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 for discharging their statutory responsibilities. However, WAO um, um, have not been able to, 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 to discharge their, their responsibilities in line with their time, time, timelines. Yeah, no. Listen, I'd formally record my thanks as well to Karen and, and the, the pension team for, for all the work that's uh, been carried out as well. So, uh, yeah, so a big achievement and, uh, and well done to everyone. Um, any other questions for Jeff on this one? No? OK. Um, right, building effect, flipping back. So is this, uh, so the recommendation on this one then um, is approved. So do we have to do a, we have to do a name yeah, vote so on this one, Chair? Yeah. yeah. I call yeah. everybody's name if you're for, against, or abstaining. So okay. Councillor John Curtis. For. <coughs> Councillor Phil Downing. For. Councillor Gareth Sullivan. For. Councillor Will Thomas. For. Councillor Peter Rees. Four. Okay, thank you. You haven't asked me. Oh, <laughs> sorry, Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> and four, as it happens. <laughs> okay, thanks. Okay, so the next item on the agenda is uh, from the report from Jeff's reports is uh, item B, fraud and related party fraud and related party assurances on page sixty eight. Thank you, Chairman. It's a related document uh, in, in respect of um, um, the assurance and uh, um, comfort it gives committee in respect of the financial statements that are, are produced and that, that you've just recommended. Um, we're required to, to demonstrate and communicate to, to the Wales Audit Office um, the, the control environment and the management framework that we've got in place that manages the whole process of, of, of not only the pension fund um, investment and the management of the assets, but also uh, how we deal with members, how we ensure that we're paying the members uh, the right amount of benefits, we're not making fraudulent payments, we're not, we're not paying the wrong person, etc. So it's a whole gamut of and, and range of controls and uh, management um, um, management framework that we've got in place. And then above that, the, the oversight and, and interventions that are available should, should members have concerns uh, or, or committee members or local pension board members have concerns about, about um, transactions and, 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 um, and dealings of, of, of the fund. So um, it's an annual requirement that we're required to, to, to respond to um, WAO and disclose to them the, um, the things that we've got in place to, to manage all these aspects. I mean, from a top-down level, 
we 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 have um, the pensions regulator, external auditor, the pensions ombudsman, and then you know filtering down to the pension fund committee, the local pension board, etc. And then operationally, then uh, at, at an operational level, we have internal policies and procedures such as contract procedure rules, accounting instructions, financial procedure rules, segregation of duties, and then when we have hardwired. Um, system controls such as, um, you know, the, the the segregation of duties in in our payment system that requires two people to authorise a payment before it goes. In in terms of um, the pensions management system or tear before you can amend a, a member's record, it has to go to a line manager for approval on the system. Things like that on an operational basis. All, all all these little things all add up to provide. The auditor, the pension fund committee, the local pension board comfort that 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 um, transactions and 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 uh, all the work of the pension fund is 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 being um, is is being discharged in an appropriate manner. And 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 through this document, you can see um, the auditor asks various questions on 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 how we can get that assurance, and and, and we provide that response in in the far right of of of, of the table that you can see below. Um, and and it's that therefore um, the 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 responses are, are, are therefore um, committee to approve. This has also been to CMT as well because largely the systems of control are, are, are not um, are not exclusive to the pension how the pension fund is run. It's uh, they, the, these these controls are, are council wide in in that respect, uh, Chairman. Okay. Any questions for Jeff on this one? No. Okay, so the um, the recommendation is uh, uh, on page 68. Uh, the fraud and related parties disclosure statement for City and County of Swansea Pension Fund 2019-20 is approved. Jeremy, you're on mute. <laughs> Councillor John Curtis. Four. Councillor Phil Downing. Four. Councillor Gareth Sullivan. Four. Councillor Will Thomas. Four. Councillor Peter Rees. Four. Councillor Clive Lloyd. Four. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, item 4C then is the breaches report, Jeff, on page, um, page 87. Thank you, Chairman. Um, committee's well used to receiving this report now because obviously you receive it on a quarterly basis. Required to report our breaches. Again, this is an example of of the assurance um, previously um, referred to in the previous report. You know, you receive this on an annual, on a quarterly basis. Um, you know, giving you um, due visibility on 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 breaches of performance in respect of certain uh, performance indicators um, that that are required to to benchmark ourselves against. Um, and further to my earlier comments about our our ability to continue paying. Uh, benefits to members during during this um, during this challenging time. If I refer you down to um, on page 98 of of, of your uh, papers, um, we're we're um, well 97, um, whereby um, it outlines our, our performance in respect of paying lump sums um, as, as as people retire. Obviously, a lump sum is payable upon um, someone retiring. That that that's when they get their initial lump sum, and then obviously we, on a monthly basis, then we we pay them their ongoing pension. So obviously, you can see a slight impact there in that in that 11.67% um, of retirement lump sums haven't been paid within the one month of normal retirement. However, um, when when we received all the documents documentation that we required we've paid 99 percent of them um, um, within one month after receiving those documents and as you see the previous um, the pre previous quarter we, you saw that it was hundred percent in that regard and 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 a lot lower in terms of not meeting that one month um, one month target um, um, initially this is largely down to as you say um, that 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 information flow required of members because normally they would they would bring in their birth certificate, marriage certificate, um, um, all the documentation required um, to, to to release that payment. But because of lockdown, 
because the member themselves may, may be self-isolating, may not be able to get to the post office, may not be able to drop those documents off in person. There has been a delay and there has been an impact of being able to pay those those benefits out in a timely manner. However, once we have received them, as I say, um, we're, we're paying 99.97% of them within one month of receiving um, receiving that information. So again, it's a testament to, 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 to the work of the guys done in the um, pension admin section, because um, although we are working remotely, there's still a requirement for, for members of staff to have a rotor to come into the office, to collect physical mail that we still get, um, scan it all onto the system, um, disseminate that work amongst the guys to ensure that that we can still do our job. So, um, that, you know, there there is still a, a, a degree of commitment of of, of the staff in, in in coming into the office to to be able to do that. And because uh, despite us moving to a, a more electronic uh, work workplace. Lot, lots, lots of this stuff and dealing with um, our, our members is still by um, by physical mail. Okay, thanks, Jeff. Peter, I got Peter first and then Will. Uh, thank you, Chairman. J just to ask, okay. on that last entry on, on page 100, uh, Jeff, uh, is that the same three employers that we traditionally have? Um, two, two are, Councillor Rees. And and one is a new one. Uh, and in fairness to the one new one, they are a new, um, a new sh um, scheduled body. So, in fair, you know, if 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 you could allow anyone uh, a period of grace in terms of getting up to speed and uh, and and getting to 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 know the timescales and what's required of them, you you could probably give them a free pass. But but the other two, uh, you you quite rightly point out, Councillor Reese, they are our usual suspects in that regard. Um, however, on a on a risk adjusted basis, the the contributions that we're talking about are quite small in respect of sole members. So, I, I, although not trivialising it, um, I, I I wouldn't lose too much sleep about it if um, if, if if I were you, um, Councillor Rees. Okay, I won't lose any sleep. <laughs> well, thanks. Um, just looking at the the one breach uh, email sent to the wrong email. Um, I'm just just wondering, um, have we got software that, you know, when um, members want, uh, uh, when, when a member who doesn't know how to access the system, for example, and one of the staff sends them uh, the information, surely that's how it works. It's all linked in their email, saved in their profile, and it automatically goes. And I was just wondering how it worked, really, uh, from a, on the back end and how this actually happened. Not that you know, one one breach in this isn't isn't a lot, and I totally appreciate that at all. But I'm uh, just wondering how it happened because surely the software sort of marries up the address. Um, Councillor Thomas, um, your your ob your observation of how member self serve works um, is accurate in that regard. However. Um, I ju just 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 want to um, um, emphasize that the take up of member self serve is still in its early stages. You know, we're trying to get people um, um, onto member self serve. So the controls that you allude to there are in place. The situation that's identified here is still via the um, um, traditional emailing the individual member um, because the, the the member in question hasn't signed up to member self serve so it's it's in that 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 regard that um, uh, this error has occurred it it's occurred outside of member self serve because um you you're quite right within the system itself there are those overrides which ensure that you know you're only communicating with that member however outside th this was a this was a um you know human error Function where, where, whereby the, the the wrong wrong email address was input and uh, say say for example um, 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 they they've requested I I can't give I I'm happy to 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 give you the details of this one instance but I'm I'm just trying to outline a scenario where where where, where this could happen in that a member has requested uh, a a re a recalculated um, options scenario whereby 
because obviously a member has has options in terms of how much lump sum they want to take or how much pension they want to take and and they 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 can do that normally on member self serve however if they haven't got access to that they ask a member of staff to do that for them so what's happened is that um that perhaps they've attached you have to attach that calculation to that email and send it and they've sent it to the wrong email address in that that instance however the scenario that you pointed out is that if they were signed up to member self serve they'd be able to run those scenarios themselves. They could put whatever parameters they like in there and get as many different options out of the system as as, as they wanted. However, there is still a still a a, a fear maybe perhaps of of of, of signing up to it and, and, uh, and a distrust of that. Lots of people still like transacting with people. Okay, I, I'm guessing it's part of the council's modernizing strategy to try and move everyone towards that. Do, we, do the members get training on it and are they offer? Um, they're offered they're offered training on it. However, they, um, when when they first sign on, there's there's online training, but um, there's no comprehensive training provided per se when 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 you sign on. It's only online as as such as I'm aware now. There's no physical training course, etc. To it's it's quite intuitive. I think there's it's, there's there's only a way of navigating around it and accessing certain menus so you can't go wrong as such but um noting I, again it's it's, it's it's not it's not it's not a commentary on 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 age or or, or abilities of, of 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 the older generation but if you think about it um no, normally pe people only become pension conscious as they approach pensionable age and and then and they became begin to take an interest in in their pensions as they start nearing their retirement and you know we're in that crossover generation now that that, that the people approaching their age probably you know weren't conversant with 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 IT when they started their careers and 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 again to remind members the majority of our our, our membership are, are 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 lower paid non administrative non IT um 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 cognizant workers you know they 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 um, care workers, they're, they're, they're um, dinner ladies in schools, um, the cleaners in schools, etc. They, you know, they, they they don't deal in IT on in their day-to-day -day working lives. So, the expectation that that you know they they can just happily switch on to a system and and access all this is is is, is quite ambitious. But we're trying to trying to encourage as as they get used to this in their personal lives. Hopefully, they can adopt it. Um, for 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 accessing their pension uh, information as well. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, so, any other questions on breaches? As just said, as just said, this is a regular report for Norton. Um, so we move on to uh, the next uh, report, which is 4D, which is the WPP business plan on page 101. Thanks, thanks, Chairman. Um, Pension Fund Committee is used to receiving updates on the, on the work of the WPP, and, and and there is a further update later on in, in on on the agenda, which discloses certain sensitive dates, etc., for for for, for forthcoming um, transitions and, and work, etc. But what the WPP have done here, and just to remind members again, and and, and the report does set it out quite quite um, quite. Um, well and usefully is is just to give members a reminder about um, what the WPP is, um, what its objectives were, the background of its uh, of its genesis, and and um, and what 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 we're aiming to do as as a collective and a, a collaborative uh, group of pension funds in Wales, and that that's in uh, on page 107 and um, 108 and 109 really um, and, and 110 so that's a, a, a quite useful resume of, of, of where we are with the WPP. Um, the host authority of the WPP and, and, and I emphasize they're a host authority not a lead authority as they as they like to say in that they host the admin function for the WPP they do all the, the secretarial work they do all the um, 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 background um, soft resourcing for, for 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 the Wales Pension Partnership, and and as such, to 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 inform um, not only our collective work but 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 aid their planning as as the host authority that they've determined to to produce a, a business plan to inform um, their 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 workload going forward and the workload of WPP 
um, for, for the next three years. And, and that's outlined on, on page um, 113. Um, and as you can see, um, outlined on, 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 on that work plan are, are, are things like development climate risk policy, conflicts of interest policy, voting policy, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously, all these policies are in respect to WPP as a collective of eight uh, pension funds and, and, and should reflect the policies of, 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 of the eight constituent funds. But as you're aware, um, committee members, um, you know, um, Swansea Pension Fund has long had um, uh, an ESG policy, has long had a climate risk policy in that, you know, you, 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 you adopted yeah, um, your 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 policy a, a number of years ago. So, so in some respects, WPP is playing catch up in 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 defining and and uh, uh, publishing a policy of 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 their own. However, it's 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 just that when challenged, there there is some consistency in 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 what we're doing as a collective. We can we can point to to an agreed policy that we, that we've got in place, and 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 ensure that we're we're, we're consistent with that policy. Um, the the only the only I, I suppose um, challenge and, and weakness of it is is that I suppose it has to reflect um, um, the least common denominator of, of of the funds of the constituent funds. In that, as I say, um, the, the chairman and yourselves have approved um, lots of progressive um, um, investment strategy changes, um, policy changes during the last three months. However, lots of other funds are still slowly moving along that agenda in terms of responsible investing and climate change risk policy etc so so these policies may not be as well defined as perhaps um, 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 you would like to see however it needs to reflect as i say the the, the least common denominator w w within within the eight constituent funds and later on in the agenda uh, you you'll see that um, um, the climate risk policy and the conflicts of interest policy are on the the joint governance committee of which um, of which the chairman is Swansea's representative, we'll, 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 we'll have an opportunity to, to discuss before approving at next next week's um, joint governance committee of the WPP. Um, so this, this business plan is just um, put before um, yourselves as it is um, with, with the other uh, seven uh, pension funds um, for approval. Um, on, on, on page 117 as well, there's, there's also a reference to the budget um, for, for, for the work of the WPP and again in, in, in the report later on um, we'll, we'll include um, the statement of accounts of, of the WPP which as again is going to the Joint Governance Committee meeting next week um, that the chair will be attending for, for him to have an opportunity to, to, to input, discuss and, 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 and approve as appropriate at that time. Um, nothing further to add um, Chairman. Okay, any questions for Jeff on the WPP? I suppose one thing, one thing, Jeff, that we're, uh, uh, we will need to bring back to the committee and for consideration with the committee, I suppose, is the work being undertaken about member engagement or member involvement in the WPP. Um, so just a bit of background on, on that. Uh, the, the, both the scheme advisory board and uh, working with the pension regulator, um, I've, I've sent out advice that uh, in, in terms of good governance and improving governance within the pension fund committee environment. And part of that has has been, and you know, various pension fund committees have been lobbied for some time about how we can increase the member engagement and member involvement in the pension fund committee work. So. Um, uh, you know, I, I think the um, certainly the um, the arguments in favour of, of pension fund committee uh, pension fund member involvement in, in in the committee structure is 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 sound. It's recognised by the scheme advisory board as good governments, and and they've issued uh, um, guidance along those lines. Uh, and it's something uh, that I pursued within the WPP environment. Um, I have to say, uh, not everyone is in agreement within uh, the WPP, and uh, Ian smiling there. But it's um, it, it, we've got to the stage now where the, the officers, the officer working group, and the lead officers are are going to produce a report in terms of, of what that member engagement can look like going forward. Um, so there's all, always a number of issues to be considered, not least the, the, the whether there's voting rights for member involvement or it's an observer capacity. So that bit of work has been undertaken, and it's something that we'll bring back to the committee 
and again, it might be something that committee uh, wants to look at in, in going forward at, uh, at some point in the future as well. Yes, Chairman, I'd, I'd like to echo the, 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 the Chairman's comments there. And, and um, yeah, I, I think he's been modest in that, um, yeah, um, the, the Chairman did speak uh, out um, quite eloquently on, on, on the subject uh, at, at the last two JGCs. And uh, although not a lone voice, he, he does have some 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 other um, um, joint governance committee members who are in support of 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 of, of this um, agenda. Um, you, you know, he ha he has been leading um, that 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 drive for greater member representation at joint governance committee um, um, at, at at that level. Um, but quite rightly so, um, the host authority um, uh, w w wants to ensure that it complies with um, legislation and, and legal guidance about um, the form of that representation. And, and um, as, in, as I understand it, at the moment, legal counsel is being consulted uh, on, 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 on how we can implement that and how that needs to be reflected in, in um, the inter-authority agreement. Um, that that we've all entered into, which which ostensibly amends the constitution of of of, of the WPP to reflect um, that that additional membership. Um, but as as a, as, as an, um, yeah, ch chairman, obviously the, the the report is 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 coming to you here for 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 approval as a business plan. Obviously, um, what, what's what's glaringly uh, omitted from that is any recognition of that ongoing work in respect of member representation. So, you know, you could make a recommend, you know, approved subject to, and you'd you'd like to see some reflection of 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 that um, of that work reflected in the business plan for, formally um, to to ensure that it's on the radar. It's 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 on it's in the business plan, and 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 you can measure their progress against it um, um, accordingly. Mm, okay. Uh, yeah. What would that look like? Would they have to move an amendment to the? Well, report, is it? We, we we could we could feed that back. We could um, you, back. you could approve you could approve it. However, um, you, 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 yeah, subject. You, you, yeah, you've noted you've noted that 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 isn't in the business plan. Um, you know, could 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 it be amended? Could it be added to it? Because obviously, it's a it's a fluid document. It's not a static document. Because because the work <clears throat> plan changes as new things arise. Um, you know, though though those were items on there at a point in time. Your amendment could get circulated to to uh, the other seven authorities, and if 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 they approve them, um, it, it it could could get added on accordingly. Okay. Um. Any any questions through the questions on that for for Jeff then, Phil? No, still on mute. Yeah. Right. No, I quite agree with what uh, the suggestion that uh, Clive is putting forward. Otherwise, if it's not, this will all get lost. Uh, and by putting it in uh, the business plan, then it'll be worked on. Is what we is what we are looking for. And I think yeah, we should put something in, um, and let's see where it goes. Okay, thanks, Phil. Okay, so um, we have a recommendation that we approve the business plan, subject to uh, uh, an amendment that uh, makes reference to the work being undertaken on member representation on the WPPP. <clears throat> um, is that okay legally? Yep. Is that okay? Is there something we can uh, I can move now? Yeah, agree, Clive. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Jeremy, over to you. Only, only one question. Is amendment the right word? I, I, I agree, Phil. Um, perhaps amendment is a bit formal. Uh, maybe a recommendation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we move in that we accept the report with a recommendation to include the uh, work being undertaken by the WPP on uh, member representation. Yeah. yeah. Okay? Yeah, good. Uh, everyone clear on that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay, okay, Jeremy. Yeah. Um, Councillor John Curtis. Yes, agree, Chair. Councillor Phil Downen. Four. Uh, Councillor Gareth Sullivan. Four. Councillor Will Thomas. Yeah, four. Councillor Peter Rees. Yes, four. Councillor Clive Lloyd. Four. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. And thank you, Jeff. Okay, uh, we're on. Um, Item E now, which is the Rathbone training uh, paper for uh, information on page 2122. 
thank, thank you, Chair. Um, obviously, from 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 time to time, um, just 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 to jog members' uh, memories, um, the Pension Fund Committee receives reports approving admission of various uh, employers into the scheme, as 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 the different councils and other scheduled employers vary their working arrangements and 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 how they deliver their services. So from time to time. Um, to protect the LGPS rights of of of, of um, their employers, we're, we're employees. Sorry, we're required to to admit um, that their new employers into the LGPS. Um, one such employer um, was Rathbone Training. We admitted them into the scheme in um, 2015, and they were in respect of their former employers, Gower College and Swansea Council. Um, so it's in respect of seven employees, um, four from Garrett College and three from Swansea Council, and they're, they're, they're largely training staff um, um, that, that, that were trans transferred to, to Rathbone training. And to ensure continuity of LGPS membership, we required to, um, to, to approve them, their, 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 their admission. However, um, one of the strict requirements um, that the Pension Fund Committee demands before we admit uh, a new employer is either a bond or an indemnity or a sponsoring employer guarantee to underwrite any unfunded liabilities, orphan liabilities or or, or unfunded costs whatsoever arising as a, as a result of that uh, admission. Um, and, and on that basis, we admitted Rathbone training in, in 2015. But as you can see in the report, um, we received notification in, in May 2020 this year that, that Rathbone Training had, admit, had entered into um, a creditor's voluntary liquidation. Um, as, 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 as of today, I still haven't had confirmation whether it's directly COVID-19 related. However, I would suggest that because they'd already appointed liquidators in May um, and, and, and things were already quite advanced at that point, I, I would suggest it's not directly related to COVID-19 related issues. I, I would suspect that, that, that Rathbone and Training were already in trouble well before the onset of lockdown, et cetera, et cetera. Um, however, I, I, I cannot confirm that. Um, um, as I say, um, the, the administrators of the liquidation have been appointed, and that's uh, Begbie's trainer. And, and we've been notified of, of, of the creditors meeting that, that's, that's due to be held. Um, we've registered our interest as a creditor because as indicated in, in 2.4 of, of, of the report, um, there are some outstanding liabilities in respect of Rathbone training. There's um, about £70,000 in respect of early access costs and actuarial recharges in respect of the Gower College um, employees, former employees, and about £2,000 in respect of the Swansea Council employees. As I say, those interests are registered with um, with the administrators of of of, of um, Rathbone Training. Um, so 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 hopefully um, we'll be able to recover those outstanding costs um, out, of, out of the remaining assets of, of Rathbone Training. However, if 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 we don't, we will call upon the admission agreement that was signed by all parties, and 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 recover those costs from the original employers. That's Gower College and Swansea Council. So in, in terms of risk to the fund, um, um, we're, we're, we're covered off and, and the Pension Fund Committee can be confident that, that, that those liabilities will, will, will be covered off. In, res in respect of uh, risk to, 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 to those employees transferred, as, as you can see at 2-2, all, all those um, seven members are either now pensioners, deferred members, or they've transferred their benefits to their new employers. So there's no no risk to them either in that that that, that respect. So as I say, the report comes here to, to to committee for for information just to keep you informed. As far as I'm aware, this is the first failure of an employer of, of the scheme in, of the scheme in my lifetime. Um, um, that, that I've, I've ever known of. And um, as I say, I can't directly attribute it to, to COVID-19 at, at, at this stage. OK, thanks, Jeff. Any questions for Jeff? No? OK, the reports for information. And um, 
we go on to item 4F then, which is uh, resourcing uh, page 124 to 126. Karen, did you say you were going to? Uh, yeah, I think Karen's just exited the meeting. Uh, just exited, yeah. Um, th th thank you, Chairman. Um, this report brought, brought um, before committee to, to, to ask you to approve um, some resourcing changes in respect of both sides of the business. As the introduction says, largely, largely the business comprises of two halves of the business, management of the assets, the investments and the accounting side of things, and then dealing with the liabilities, i.e. paying our pensioners, pay, paying our dependents, De de dealing with members basically um, and since um, 2015 um, like for line management purposes and resourcing purposes within, within the admin authority and that's Swansea Council's um, um, within Swansea Council's management structure the, the, the pensions function sits within um, finance department now um, and that sits within the resources directorate and earlier this year um, the Chief Finance Officer, um, the Section 151 Officer, implemented a senior staff restructure within the Finance Department. And, and, and this sought to address um, job evaluation anomalies versus you know, other roles within the authority. Um, and then also re reflected um, the increased demand and complexity of the work that the finance staff um, do now. And, and and how that has changed since the roles were job evaluated 11 years ago. Um, and, and obviously, um, during that same period, um, um, we, 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 we faced um, the, the, the 10 years or so of, of, of austerity in terms of a reduction in, in, in resourcing, et cetera, in the department. So the Chief Finance Officer, um, as, as, as um, had approved by CMT in March 2020, uh, a, a broad restructuring in finance in general, which also includes um, the, the, the the pension fund staff identified in this report. Um, so, so the, this recommendation is is coming to to the pension fund committee for approval as well because it, it runs in parallel. Obviously, CMT are responsible for 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 all resourcing across 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 Swansea Council. However. As, 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 as in recognition of the slightly different um, governance arrangements with the pension fund, it's, it's also coming in parallel to the pension fund committee for approval as well. So you can see the proposals there and who it affects in, in 3.1. Um, and um, the financial implications are outlined in, in, in 6.1. And the recommendation is that um, the amendments outlined in 3.1, subject to, to, to HR, JE and, and and recruitment and selection processes, and and the financial implications in six one are are approved, Chairman. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Uh, as you can see from the report, these these have also been endorsed by the corporate management team at a senior level. So, um, any questions for Jeff on this? Just to make a point, uh, Chair, in three two, it Alice? says that the the roles are subject to job evaluation. And that's not in the recommendation. Um, um, Job evaluation has been under, was undertaken on it, Jeff, was that the point? No, um, well, they, they are subject to job evaluation. They, they, they're oh, yeah. going to they're going to be go, go through that um, go through that uh, sausage machine in 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 due but course. Should it be in the recommendation? Um, you, you, you're right, um, Councillor Sullivan, in that um, the eventual outcome will reflect the outcome of, of the JE um, process. So, um, strictly speaking, yes, it, 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 it can be amended to reflect that. I'm, I'm happy to reflect that amendment to the recommendation, Chairman, if you are. Okay. So, the... Um... So the recommendation then is the resource and amendments outlined in 3.1 and the financial implications in 6.1 are approved subject to the job evaluation, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so I'll move that then. Um, that was seconder. Yeah, yeah. Gareth. Okay, so Jeremy, over to you. Okay, Councillor John Curtis. Four. Councillor Phil Downen. Four. Councillor Gareth Sullivan. Four. Councillor Will Thomas. Four. Councillor Peter Rees. Four. Councillor Clive Lloyd. 
Oh, thank you. Okay. Okay, thank I'll you. call. I'll, I'll call um, Karen, Karen back, back yeah. to the meeting. Ch Ch Chairman, if I may as well, as an addendum to this report, just just a signpost. Um, there is currently work ongoing um, about the broader um, pay and grading <laughs> for for pensions admin staff, largely um, across the WPP, and that we're doing some benchmarking exercises <laughs> with. with um, you know, cost per member um, um, analysis and benchmarking to ensure that um, um, grades below the senior management structure that, that we've identified here, that they're appropriately graded and remunerated in line with the rest of Wales um, in, in terms of similarly sized funds who are undertaking the, 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 the same type of work, etc. So a report will come back to committee with, with any recommendations arising out of that in due course, Chairman. OK, thank you, Jeff. OK, so item five is exclusion of the public. Would somebody like to move? Phil Downing has moved. I moved, sir. And seconded by Jan Curtis. So uh, can we stop recording now? Yeah, Jeremy? thank you, Chair. Stop recording and the live feed will stop as well. Thank you.